You may remember Randy Kay. She was a popular radio personality in Connecticut, but what you might not know is that her son was diagnosed with schizophrenia. I recently sat down to talk to Randy about her family's personal journey. Take a look. Mental illness is more common than cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, yet many people are too ashamed to talk about it. According to the World Health Organization, one in every four people develops a mental disorder at some stage in their lifetime. And in the case of schizophrenia, it often develops in the teens to early 20s. Ben, behind his voices, one family's journey from the chaos of schizophrenia to hope was written by former radio personality Randy Kay, currently the state trainer with Family to Family, a program of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Welcome, Randy. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. First, let's talk about schizophrenia for okay. those who do not know what it is. Okay. Um, I'm just a mom who didn't give up on her kid, but I, I have learned a lot through the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Schizophrenia is actually a, a cluster of symptoms. Unlike bipolar and depression, which are mood disorders, it's more of a thought disorder. It's an illness of connections. It's difficult to make connections. It's also quite frequently accompanied by, in fact, this is one of the uh, criteria for diagnosis, what we call hallucinations, which could be hearing voices that other people don't hear or seeing things or tasting or smelling or touching things that are not there. When did you suspect something was not quite right with your son? Ah, I, the suspicion had to grow because my son, Ben, went through a typical onset of schizophrenia, which is called gradual onset. So as a child, he did not exhibit any signs of it. but. Beginning around 14 or 15, he began to have what I considered a tough adolescence. And yes, it was, but it wasn't getting any better no matter what I did. And I'm a really good parent, and I disciplined and did everything, followed every piece of advice. You were probably thinking you weren't a very good parent at that point. Well, no, I think no parent of an adolescent thinks <laughs> that they know the answers, that's right. for sure, because your child turns into this strange person. But um, it was actually when he got to about 16 or 17 mm -hmm. and the, my other friends kids were starting to calm down and grow up and my son was getting more and more delusional that I thought something is up but as is very typical with that age group he had turned to marijuana as a way to quiet his brain down which I now know so I was blaming everything on the pot use and so sent him to get clean and sober and it was after he got clean and sober that symptoms were still there that I thought oh my god something's really wrong here so when did you get the diagnosis didn't get the diagnosis till he was about 20 and part of the problem as I look back now I know is that as schizophrenia develops mm -hmm. it mimics a lot of other conditions it looks like ADD at first then it can look like depression it can look like bipolar it can exhibit symptoms similar to OCD and as I began to educate myself and learn about the symptoms of schizophrenia, it became clear to me <laughs> that's what my son had. And we went through several psychiatrists, and eventually I found the one who agreed with me and saw what I saw, and very importantly, was willing to listen to what I was able to witness as the parent of this person in between visits. You really had to be the advocate for your son. Oh, still do. Still do. Uh, you know, it's, it's difficult for healthcare providers because very often they don't see the patient and they don't see the family until everything has already fallen apart. So I had to wait and find the psychiatrist who would be willing to listen to what I observed in the six days and 23 hours between visits so that he could make a more accurate diagnosis. That's part of advocating for your loved one. Finding education for yourself so that you know the best things to do in the home are very important. What about treatment? What is available? Well, they're working on it. They're working you on know, it. There is no cure right now for schizophrenia, but there is treatment. And the more treatment options that are available, the better the choice is. Unfortunately, with a lot of the medications that are out there now, there are side effects that make it difficult. They are experimenting with, with treating, not experimenting, but they are trying to treat earlier, mm -hmm. which is great, but in the early teens, what teen, what person would like to take a medication that causes weight gain and lethargy and, uh, you know, just feelings of not being quite right. So the medications are getting better, thank goodness, but there is no cure yet. So what you have to do is find the treatment that helps to balance your loved one as best as possible. And because it takes a while 
for the treatment to take effect. It can take weeks before you go, this is the right medication or it isn't. My son Ben right now is doing beautifully, <laughs> knock wood, you know, he's in college, he has a job, he's a, a great person, and he does have to take this medication every day, the way a diabetic may have to take insulin. Let's talk about the book itself. It okay. must have been difficult, though, for you to write down everything that you've had to experience. It was and it wasn't. It was really like the the hardest term paper I ever had mm -hmm. to write, and I still have nightmares about writing term papers in college, because I had lived it all, and I was a record keeper. I had a journal, and you know, parents learned to have hospital records and symptoms. Everything was written down. What was difficult was recreating the timeline of what happened then, because it really was a chaotic phase. It's like, something's wrong, let's try this. Something else is wrong, let's try that. So to recreate it and say, mm -hmm. what happened when? was the hardest part. Emotionally, I'd gone through it a lot already, but recreating those scenes, because it is a memoir, and I write it kind of like a movie screenplay, and he said, I said, my daughter said, so that was kind of difficult, but important, I thought. That's what Because you going. relive it again and again oh, and yes. again. And I had tape recordings of conversations, so those were hard to listen to, because I had forgotten how tough it was. What do you want families to learn from your book? I would say I would sum it up in the word search. First of all, mental illness happens to one in four families in this country, and most people are ashamed to talk about it. I can't tell you how many times I go to speak about this, or about stress relief, or just about anything, or when I was working for the radio station, and I would mention this, because to me there's no shame in it. It's just an illness that happened to my son's brain, and people will come up to me, always, at least one person, my sister has bipolar and I've never been able to talk about it, or, or similar. So I want to open the dialogue. Mm -hmm. I want this to be an illness without judgment so that cures can happen. And just really quickly, what do you want the experts in the field to know about what you went through? I want the experts to know that there is always a person underneath the symptoms, then behind his voices. He's kind, he's sweet, his delusions were only about creating world peace. And there's a person under there, and that's very important to remember, and that the families are there to help you if you let them. I understand you have two book signings coming up? I do, And I where do. are they? Um, locally in Connecticut, I have one coming up at uh, Written Words Bookstore in Shelton this Sunday, November 6th. And I have one coming up at the Fairfield Library in conjunction with Nami Fairfield and our J. Julia in Madison on November 29th. Very good. Again, Thank the you. name of the book is Ben Behind His Voices, One Family's Journey from the Chaos of Schizophrenia to Hope. Andy, thanks so much for being Thank here, you for sharing so your story. My I know pleasure. a lot of families have learned a lot from you today. Thank